Hello and welcome to the Daily Millwall for Tuesday the 1st of February 2022 and I'm going to start off today with a little apology and that's the Millwall Football Club because uh, it seems that the situation with Luke Freeman may have not been Millwall Football Club's fault and we'll get to that in a minute but I'm just going to show you here uh, Luke Freeman, Millwall announced Luke Freeman loan signing midfielder to spend the remainder of campaign in SC16. Uh, Millwall Football Club is delighted to announce the signing of Luke Freeman on loan from Sheffield United until the end of the 21-22 season. The attacking midfielder who can play centrally or on either flank becomes Gary Rout's second signing of the January transfer window. Freeman is unavailable for selection for the Preston game. The 29-year-old came through the ranks at Gillingham before a move to Arsenal in 2008 was accompanied by loan periods at Yeovil Town and Stevenage. Freeman then moved to uh, Stevenage on a permanent basis, making over 100 appearances before doing the same at Bristol City, where he spent two and a half years in the Robin side which won promotion from Skybet League One, with a move to Queen's Park Rangers following that. Possessing bags of championship experience, Freeman spent a further two and a half years in West London before a transfer to Bramall Lane and Sheffield United, where the midfielder played in the Premier League. Freeman spent the 2021 campaign on loan at Norton Forest, and he now joins the Lions, having made a number of appearances for the Blades earlier this season. Freeman will wear squad number 16 during his time at the club. And there you go. So the signing did go through. And why I say uh, it might not be Millwall's fault uh, is because of this. So you can see here, these are the transfers and there are a number of them that came through today on Tuesday. And Mills is the last one there. Six o'clock on Tuesday it came through. Um, I, and I think what happened was, now last season, uh, the transfer window last January, we had two uh, windows we had a transfer window and a loan window and they weren't on the same day but I think whoever's involved with UEFA or FIFA said you can't do the loan window anymore or every transfer needs to be done on that uh, end of January you can't have an extra loan window because there was a transfer window uh, across the whole of uh, I don't know if it's Europe or the world or whatever and well, the FA said well uh, or the EFL whatever said well if we loan between our own clubs you know, you know, go go stuff yourselves we're going to do that so we might not be able to tra uh, transfer a player either on loan or whatever outside of the country but we'll do it inside of the country so two fingers up to you but apparently they've said no you can't do that so we have the spectacle now this year where both the loan window and the transfer win uh, permanent transfer window is on the same day which was the 31st of January and it seems uh, wherever the transfers go through the EFL or the FA uh, I think it might be the EFL I think um, or maybe both and they've got completely overwhelmed with the situation here and you can see so we've got the transfers coming through after the deadline the deadline was 11 o'clock and there's just tons of tons of loans mostly uh, some permanent transfers but mostly loans coming through late um, and you can see here so 112 the Jermaine Defoe um, unattached to Sunderland was announced I think that probably would have been, had to be done earlier because he probably needed uh, international uh, registration because he, he last played at Rangers Glasgow Rangers unless they automatically gave him his, his registration back to him and transferred it back to him and, he, and then he could go anywhere um, but you see the situation here where so don't know maybe like at, um, uh, one o'clock they just thought fuck this and decided to go home and then carry on the next day and then you can see the day after transfers still coming through which I imagine um, they had to process because and if they if they would have stayed and done that they would have been processing transfers till about three or four in the morning so I can understand why they've said well fuck this we're going home we'll finish it off tomorrow but it left, it left a lot of us scratching our eyes thinking oh great um, it looks like Mills fucked this up uh, like they usually fuck up a lot of things and uh, 
like I said, I'd like to apologise to Millwall because it seems there was a problem with the administration uh, authorities and uh, processing all the um, deluge of loans and permanent transfers that had to come through on the same day, which wasn't happening in previous years. So apologies to Millwall for that, but you can see here. So ours was the last one announced, 6 o'clock on a Tuesday today. Uh, Sheffield United to Millwall, loan for Luke Freeman. So there you go. Um, but they kept us waiting, but uh, there you go. So let's get on with the game. So we had a game today. Uh, Mill nil, Preston North and nil. Uh, it says Mill Preston there. Mill Preston nil nil, North and nil. Um, easily fixed. Um, yeah, it wasn't the best of games, was it? Um, not a lot of attacking going on. Not 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 a lot of clear cut attacking options. They had the best uh, chance to score. Which was a penalty, um, Bart dived the right way. Uh, he probably was a, a little bit late because luckily, luckily he was late diving at it because the penalty hit the um, bottom of the post and came back out at such an angle, 45 degree angle, that it went straight off uh, to the side near, near the uh, touchline which was good for us uh, if it would have come at a different angle probably would have hit bar then gone in so and if he would have been dived a bit earlier he might, might have, probably could have got to it and knocked it away but maybe he knocked it into the goal but there you go um so let's read it this is from uh, newsaden.co.uk it's the match report of the game we were recorded back-to-back -back clean sheets that's good in the league for the first time since October but they were held to a drab nil nil draw by Preston North End at the Den on Tuesday night. Ben Whiteman had the game's best chance from the penalty spot but was denied by the post as both sides were forced to settle for a point in SE 16. I think actually Preston may have well been playing for that point to be honest with you. As you can see on the right hand side where the table is now um, status quo goes on they are above us by one point we've got a game in hand in them so they probably thought, well, let's play for the draw because that it did seem that way. Um, other than the penalty, they didn't really have a lot going on. Mm, not really. Um, we had a couple of chances. Um, let's see if, if it gets talk, talked about this. In, um, uh, it was a game that took a long time to get going. No shit. Not only that, there was massive, massive congestion because the um, Blackwall Tunnel was closed. Greenwich and Woolwich was absolutely messed up. Uh, the crowd was giving us like 10,000, but I'm pretty sure there's a lot less there than that. Um, I think season ticket holders couldn't get there today, or they probably didn't bother and just turned turned back around. Absolutely horrendous traffic. Um, so the stadium was quiet as neither side managed a genuine opportunity until the 18th minute when Mason Bennett curled a free kick into the wall. The home side began to gain the upper hand approaching the half hour mark. Mikko Keftenbell's ferocious volley was deflected wide. And Bennett called another one uh, effort straight into the arms of Daniel Iverson. Three minutes later, Emil Reese's effort from distance was held by linesgeeper Bartosz Biakowski. The host started the second half with more attacking intent. Bennett Kofobi got on the end of Danny McNamara's long ball. But a heavy touch meant he couldn't get a shot away. Yeah, that was, that was unfortunate. Um, Danny McNamara put this beautiful uh, counter attack in ball with some backspin on it that landed in the uh, forward run of Benekophobi and it, as he's running onto it he just knees it forward and it just goes too far between in front of him and the keeper can just mop it up I mean if if he'd have took the shot on straight away um, if he had had a light touch I mean there you go um, the, these on the margins there and Kifton Bell had the bit between his teeth as he sent another stinging shot goalward, but it was just wide, it was way wider than Mark actually. And the visitors had a glorious chance to take the lead in the 64th minute after Sean Hutchinson brought down Andrew Hughes in the penalty area. Whiteman took responsibility, but he struck his spot kick off the post. Murray Wallace's cross just missed ahead of Jake Cooper as the Lions went in search of a winner. Substitute Tyler Burry fired wide in the closing stages, but neither side could find a winner. 
Um, takeaways, both sides struggle in dull stalemates. Danny McMahon is a Mills Bryce spark. It's safe to say that this was no classic. Both sides were suffering from a real, real lack of cutting edge. Mills' problems in the attacking third of the pitch may have been mentioned several times this season, but this was a very dire game in terms of forward quality from both sides. Phoebe's work rate can't be questioned, but his touch on several occasions really let him down. Three times poor uh, control cost the Lions a chance at goal. Uh, those moments make such a difference in games as tight as this one indeed indeed just looking at the shots that each team had not a lot going on uh, McNamara was a positive for Millwall he tried to get in behind North End defence and look dangerous when he did but it did not happen often enough for Millwall's liking his ability to deliver dangerous balls into the box is also improving another weapon that could be key for Millwall in the remainder of the season yeah not only that but um when you've got Burke playing in front of him now, uh, well, Jed Wallace is back, we'll get into that. Um, Burke is very quick, so that's pushing them back. They have to sit back on that left-hand side. They can't go running forward because they might be in a bit of a bother, so they have to sit back on that left-hand side. Um, Jed Wallace and George Savile will return. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Um, how the transfer window closes yesterday and they're both available today. Uh, no doubt about it, seeing Jed Wallace's name on a team sheet, albeit as a substitute, was a welcome sight for all Mill fans. Mill's main attacking threat over the last two, two seasons and not featured in the matchday squad since December 11th. The speculation around his immediate future is of course over for the moment as he stayed with the club in January. Lions fans will be hoping that he can now get up to speed quickly and get back to the form he was in before the window um, for what remains of his Mill career. Hopefully that stretches beyond the summer. Wallace came on for Oliver Burke and got a fantastic reception from the home support. George Savile also made his return to the match today squad following injury. With the intense schedule that we all have in the coming weeks, having as many fit and re uh, players ready to go is going to be crucial. Uh, Rowett named the same start in 11 that beat West Brom 2-0 on Saturday. But um, Wallace and Savile will replace Zach Lovelace and Ben Thompson on the bench. Of course, Ben Thompson off uh, to Gillingham. They played today, but he was not uh, eligible to play in that game. Um, so the team was Millwall, uh, Biakowski, McNamara, Hutchison, Murray, Wallace, Cooper, Malone, uh, Mitchell, Kieftenbeld, Burke, Afobi and Bennett. And Mahoney came on for Malone in the 60th minute, as well as Jed Wallace coming on for Burke. And Tyler Burry came off of Bennett in the 78th minute. The unused substitutes were Long, Pierce, Savile and Evans. And we got bookings for Bennett, Hutchinson and Burry there. So there you go. Yeah. Um, like I said, I think Preston are playing for the draw. And they limited Mill's chances whilst trying to get some of their own. They, um, and we ended up with the draw. Now we got a clean sheet, which is good. Uh, we were very lucky that the penalty came off the post and went out uh, the way it did. And we're very unlucky up front again with Benekophobi not um, managing to control the ball as, as good as he probably should have done. So there you go. Um, what does the uh, uh, Preston boss think? So this is from londonnewsonline.co.uk, South London Presence Online website. And this is from the Preston North End boss, Ryan Lowe. We were outstanding. Uh, Ryan Lowe claimed Preston North End were the only team that looked likely to find a winner in their nil nil draw at the den against Millwall on Tuesday evening. Ben Whiteman had the best chance of the game when he missed a penalty just before the hour mark. His spot kick hit the right upright after Sean Hutchinson was penalised for shirt pulling. Now Lowe said we were outstanding. It was nearly the perfect away performance. There was only one team that was going to win it and that was us. Uh, really pleased with the attitude and application. It's always a good sign when the opposition changed shape. But we nullified their strengths really. Their darting runs in behind from the strikers. I'm just disappointed we couldn't leave with the three points. Sometimes you miss them. Sometimes you score them. Ben will score a minute more than he'll miss. His record suggests that we were dead worthy of the penalty. That's football, isn't it? We put our bodies on the lane and made a few changes to freshen it up. As long as we don't lose, West Brom came here the other day and got beaten. It was a tough result for them. We knew Millwall f were fantastic in everything they've done. Uh, we know what Millwall are about. It's a tough place to come, but whatever you, whenever you go on a road, uh, a point's great. If we can turn our own games into wins, that's great because that's two points a game. Um, so, yeah, basically he's saying... He seems to have taken a leaf out of the Gary Rout book saying, uh, 
drawing's great. So who he would rather draw every away game and then win every home game and then you get four points from two games, which is two points a game. But then if you win a game and lose a game, that's one and a half points per game. So that's how they do it now. They play the numbers, don't they? Um, and there you go. Uh, it seems every every manager nowadays would love to win one nil. Um, so let's see what Gary Rout says. Uh huh. Uh, Mill boss on Preston draw. Luke Freeman signing. Jed Wallace return and the lack of goals. This is from News at Den. Uh, Gary Rout hopes Luke Freeman can have some creativity to his side after seeing the Lions draw nil nil in a tame game against Preston at the Den on Tuesday night. Freeman. 29 was officially confirmed as a Mill player on loan from Sheffield United ahead of kickoff. Preston's Ben White man missed the penalty in the contest that saw just three shots on goal, two from the hosts. That was on tar that's on target. So there's only three shots on target between both teams. Jed Wallace made his first appearance since December 11 when he came on in the second half. It lacked a lot of quality. But I think when you look, when you put so much effort into the West Brom game, sometimes these sort of games feel a little bit flat. This is what I said Gary Rowett would say. He didn't change any of the players. I said this before in yesterday's video. He's not. He's going to keep this if he keeps the same team, and we don't get a result. He's going to complain about the players being tired or lacking motivation or whatever, and he's doing it here, right here. There are reasons behind that. I thought Preston got behind the ball. I think they came for a point. No shit. Didn't commit too many bodies forward. That's their prerogative, and it's up to us to find a solution. Uh, we're the type of team that needs uh, that need that tempo in the game. It's hard to create it ourselves because we lack that little bit of finesse and quality at times. We changed formation. We got more attacking players on, but it didn't quite give us that chance, and we didn't find that extra bit. Yeah, fair, fair play to row out. Rao it did uh, make the substitutions. He brought on um, Mahoney and Wallace on the 60th minute. So he did make proactive substitutions to change the game. So that was good to see from him. Uh, sometimes games are like that. It's a tough division. But we've got to do a little bit more to break teams like Preston down when they get behind the ball like that. Uh, Mill have scored just 29 goals in 28 league games this season. Ay ay ay, Rowett was asked if that was a concern. Uh, he replied yes. Doesn't take a genius to work that one out. That's why we didn't win the game today, but that's not an easy solution to it. When you look at some of the players in this division, they get into double figures, there are very few of them, and they cost a lot of money. What we've got to do as a team is work incredibly hard to find a way to do that, but again, you think of the quality of players we've had on the pitch, the likes of Ollie Burke, Mason Bennett, Ben and Kofobi, Jed Wallace, Conor Mahoney, Tyler Wuri, we're trying to do that, but it's something we need to do better. It's not a concern, it's something we have to get better at, it's as simple as that. That defines where you end up in the table. Uh, the window has been a really tough window, we've tried to change our approach in a way we do things, sometimes it's very difficult to get those players in. What Luke is, is a championship player that's proven over the years, he's another player that's probably had uh, a lack of game time recently. Uh, Jed came on and it was difficult for him. We hoped he might give us that little bit of spark, but he's been out for seven or eight weeks and has had a difficult period. Uh, I think we'll get better. Our attacking options will get stronger. Players will get fitter and our squad will have more depth to it. Certainly someone like Luke in a game like that, you're looking for someone to just do something a little bit different to unlock the door. I think both teams tonight were looking for that. I felt second half we were the ones pressing and trying to do it, but we were the home team and that's our responsibility. We couldn't quite make it happen. Rowett was pleased with Wallace's return. He added, brilliant, I think it was one of the big things in this window. We wanted to keep Jed, you want to keep your best players available. We need better attacking quality in the final third to give us a chance to win games. Sometimes those extra options, you've seen it in recent weeks, we put young players on to try and win games against good sides, and it's difficult to do that. What we've been able to do tonight, and what we've been able to do in the future, is put on players that know what it takes to win games in the championship, and the likes of Tyler Burry to come on and give us that little bit of zip. I think you could see Wallace hadn't trained that much in 7 or 8 weeks, but because he has been so important I felt he might just give us that little bit of spark, but maybe tonight it was just a little bit too much too, uh, too much for him. 
Um, yeah, so now we have probably a lot of attacking options. If we got Jed Wallace staying, I think maybe they, they signed Oliver Burke because they thought Jed Wallace might be leaving or that might be an option. Um, and it didn't turn out that way, so we've now got a, an abundance of attacking players. So does that mean the style changes? Now we've seen it in the last two games, I think. Um, Rowett making it at attacking changes. Um, at the same time, bringing on two attacking players at the same time. Could that be a thing we see where the three attack, maybe the three attacking players or the two attacking players, are changed at at the same time to bring off uh, fresh legs to do that attacking, um, and to change it up to try and score score a goal against the tired defence because generally you don't um you don't change your defenders. Uh, unless there's something wrong, so tactic. It's not a tactic thing where you you substitute your defenders. It's not really a done thing. You know, you might take off uh, and take off for a defender, then chuck him back in there, uh, put an extra person in there. But you don't really change, swap out a defender for a de for a defender for fresh legs. So with all these attacking players we've got now, we've got um, Wallace, Mahoney, Burke, um, Mason Bennett, Benikafobi. Freeman, with all these attacking players you've got, we could play 60 minutes with the three up front and then change the whole three up front at once on maybe the 60th minute, 75th minute, 80th minute, and just put those tired defenders under the cosh. Tell them, look, there's 20 minutes in the game. Keep on fucking running because you're coming in for the last 20 minutes. I want to see. Uh, 90 minutes worth of effort in 20 minutes because you're fresh so let's go for it and that might be a thing that might help might be a strategy that we could utilize it seems Gary Rout's trying to do that he tried to do it today um, didn't really work because the players that come in um, aren't match fit um, but maybe it'll work in the future and maybe it'll reignite our season because we certainly need something to happen if we're going to do anything but we are still, so we're on 37 points now. Um, I'm still looking at 50 point mark to be honest with you. Um, I think I worry about relegation has kind of faded away now. To be honest with you, I think Peterborough are not, not very good. And there's a lot of teams between us and them, so. But it's never say never, but I think um, we should be alright now. But. I think that's about it for us. I don't think I think playoffs are done and dusted. So here we go from the London News Online. Uk. It's more uh, comments from Gary Rowe on Luke Freeman. Uh, he can unlock the door. Mill boss on deadline sweep for Sheffield United. Luke Freeman. This uh, Gary Rowe has backed new signing Luke Freeman to help Mill boost their creative output during the second half of the season. The Lions beat the deadline to seal a last gasp loan deal for the Sheffield United midfielder who will spend the rest of the campaign in SC16. Freeman is an est established championship performer who has racked up more than 150 appearances in the second tier during his career. Indeed, he is proven at this level and he's played in the Premier League. And that's what Gary Rout's kind of looking for to be honest with you. And sad to say, but when you're looking at this guy and you're looking at Ben Thompson, just in, not not in terms of the person they are, how Mill how, but in terms of footballing ability, you've got to say he's better than Ben Thompson. But again, this guy's on loan. He's not he's not our player, so we're gonna to have to keep go back into the loan market again next season and bring in another one who's as good as him. Or maybe if he likes it here, he might sign. Don't know if his contract's up at the end of the season. I don't think it is. But we'll see how we go. So, Rowett believes he can be the difference in games like Tuesday night stalemate with Preston. Although he did stress that it will take time for Freeman to get up to speed. Hopefully, a lot because he's a good player. Said Rowett, he's a championship player. It's been a really tough window. We tried to change our approach in terms of the way we do things, and sometimes it's very difficult to get those players in. I think Luke is a championship player that's proven over the years. He's another player that's had a lack of game time recently. So a little bit, a little bit like Oliver Burke and Mason Bennett. Luke will need a little bit of time to get up to speed. Jed Wallace looked like that today. Uh, we hoped he might give us a little bit of extra spark, but he's been out for seven or eight weeks. Uh, I think we'll get better, better, at, um, better and our attacking options will get stronger. 
I think Oscar will have a little bit more depth to it. But certainly someone like Luke in a game like that, you're looking for someone to do something that will a little bit different to unlock the door. Indeed, uh, indeed. So let's hope that does happen. But um, we now have uh, seven days till our next game against Fulham away. We don't have a game on Saturday the 5th. Um, because QPR and playing in the FA Cup and that was the game we were supposed to play um, so they've got time to train and they've got time to, to play together and get better and sort it all out and hopefully it'll work out hopefully when we play against Fulham might might not be a, the absolute mauling that everyone's expecting might be a situation that we could uh, take advantage of especially if they're playing on the Saturday and then we'll have to play on a Tuesday. We now have got seven straight days of not having a game. So we'll see how that works out. So uh, the under 23s did play today at lunchtime. And it was a winning performance from Mill under 23s. Briscoe, Tyrese Briscoe, the match winner, as under 23s win away our take from South Wales. And there he is there. Uh, Mills under 23s were 2 1 winners over Swansea City in Professional Development League on Tuesday afternoon. Sean O'Brien and Tyrese Briscoe found the net in the first half to give Kevin Nugent's side all three points away from home. The Lions took the lead after just 16 minutes as O'Brien scored directly from a free kick. Nice! But the Swans were to equalise 8 minutes from half time break. However, just as it looked like the teams were going level, Briscoe popped up to put Mill back in the lead and ultimately scored the winning goal two minutes into the first half stoppage time. Next up for Mill under 23 is a home game with Ipswich, Ipswich Town next Tuesday, which at this moment I believe is scheduled to be played at Mill's training ground. Will it be on the recast app? I don't know, probably not, because um, we don't have that set up there to uh, record it. You need some like scaffolding or whatever to get up high, I don't know. Um, so the team was Gilmore, Walker, Tenzia, Muller, Ockley, Topolodge, Davis, O'Brien, Briscoe, Boateng, Allen, and the subs were F. Salah, Hammond, Abdul Malik, Leahy, and Smith. Uh, there you go, it's a fantastic result from them. A pretty decent result. And fin we're going to finish the video today with this. Uh, so we have been selected for Sky Television, um, another home game, uh, Lions Live on Sky TV versus Huddersfield Town, uh, I think this is the feature game, so I think what that means is if you're an international Millwall fan and you watch games on iFollow, it probably will not be available for you to watch, I believe, because I think that means it's going to be the international game as well, so you'll have to try and find out who's showing it on TV in the country that you're in and watch it on that or watch some kind of uh, stream dare I say it that's up to you um, watch out for viruses on your computer though uh, Mill Skybet Championship fixture against Huddersfield Town at the Den on Wednesday the 16th of March has been selected for live TV coverage by Sky Sports. The match will remain on the same date and at the same kickoff time, 7.45pm, but will be shown live. Ticket details, blah 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 blah. So there you go. Um, Sky uh, um, game against Huddersfield. Yeah. And that is it for today's video. Thank you for watching. And goodbye.